Hey, you Grateful Dead fans. We've been getting a lot of questions from the fans. The one question is, uh, where is Dark's Tab manufactured? And the answer, of course, is right here at jdarks.com, the Tab Factory. Um, it all goes down right at this spot. And uh, I'm going to take you a tour of the factory now so you, you know what, you, what you're getting, where, you know, that we're meeting the health and safety standards here at the factory. So, uh, the first thing to do when you're about to write a tab out is uh, after you get your guitar, of course, after you have the computer turned on, after you have your on screen keyboard set up, and you have a piece of blank word paper. You open up your blank tab file. You cut and paste a hunk of tab into your blank file. Put the title of the song up. Then, and this is the most important step, you gotta get your feet up in the air. You know, sit back. Get comfy. Like this. Because now this is the proper tab, tabbing position feet up, slightly reclined, you know, approximately a, a 30 degree angle on the body. I cannot emphasize too strongly the importance of proper posture for tabbing. Now, you're going to need a tabbing guitar. And in my case, it's a, a Guild D25, 1970, with a sculpted back. See this? Good for tabbing. And uh, just plunk the guitar up here and reach over and turn on your uh, sound forge or whatever uh, program you're going to use to grab a clip, block out the part you're trying to tab so you can loop it, change its speed, and get your notes. Because uh, Jerry can be kind of challenging sometimes. So uh, that's, uh, that's about how it goes. Now, another question I get asked a lot is, uh, what can I do uh, to improve my tone? What kind of guitar should I have to play like Jerry, sound like Jerry? What equipment do I need? And uh, I'll pass this along to you. This is the product of 30 years of uh, experience in this area. The only thing you need is six strings. Uh, think of it this way. If Jerry came to your house and picked up to your guitar, do you think he'd sound like anybody else? Do you think he'd mistake him for you? No. Do you think unless the wall of sound was carted into your bedroom that Jerry wouldn't sound like Jerry? Of course not. And the reason is that Jerry plays like Jerry. And he could play uh, a bar of soap <laughs> with, with some toothpicks for strings and he would sound like Jerry. <laughs> so the truth is you don't need any equipment and you don't need any fancy equipment. So uh, you should be happy with the guitar you got. That one that's sitting next to you is the one that you're going to uh, make sound as close as you can because uh, he could do it. So it's not the equipment. It's not the guitar. It's, it's, it's in here. This is, this is where you're going to find what you're looking for and uh, so that's the answer to you know a lot of guys get hung up on the equipment they gotta get the uh, the uh, JBL E120 speaker you know I got one but and, and you know what it sounds a little better and uh, you know I got my Jerry guitar and it sounds a little better but uh, there's one thing that's gonna make you sound uh, like whoever you're trying to sound like more than anything and that's to play like them and that my friends is right there and it's not in any guitar or any amplifier and it just comes from playing playing the music and so there's uh, there's tonight's wisdom now and you know I get a lot of emails from uh, the folks and they say uh, you know could you be a little more specific on exactly uh, what I should be doing how I should be playing where where is this stuff on the neck you know it's kind of tough to follow the movement on this video and the 
Um, well, the, the, the bottom line is you get out there on the web and there's only about 42 different ways to look at a guitar neck at least and um, you got to learn some positions and patterns. You know, at the end of the day, uh, a song has chords and a chord is made up of a scale and an ar you know, and the arpeggios are the notes of the chord and so on. You got to learn those basics and you got to learn where they are on the neck so that uh, as the song's moving along and the chords are going by you got to adjust uh, where you are on the neck to match up with um, match, the, match the notes you're playing to something harmonious if that's if you're trying to make uh, harmony uh, with the chord um, now I want to show you how ridiculous this search for the sound can get I'm going to introduce you now to the uh, dark somatic now, what this is, this is uh, the, t the top end of a guitar that I, uh, you know, junker that I uh, busted up in, uh, a couple of years ago. And what I did was I went out and bought some plexiglass. And um, see the guitar neck plexiglass, and I laid on on top of this thing, the dark somatic, uh, the notes for different positions. And I made up about, I don't know, half a dozen of these things. Each one, you know, here's a Mixolydian in this key, here's a uh, the Locrian, here's the uh, blues. So you take this and you lay it on the top of the neck and you see the uh, you know here's the fourth the flatted seventh the flatted third the root fourth the note of the scale and uh, there you go dark somatic uh, you can't buy these in any store they have to be custom made um, for you um, i found it to be a completely worthless and utter waste of time and um, I don't know, it may have helped me for about five minutes, but uh, uh, it's a bad idea. I wouldn't run out and try to patent this device. I didn't bother, but uh, I, bet <laughs> I bet I could sell a few hundred thousand of them if I just, you know, stuck them in a the box. But um, what you got to do is learn your scales and learn where the third and the fifth and the seventh and the flat at seventh and the flat five are in relation to everything and you got to do that in a bunch of different positions and you know if you do that for a few years eventually you learn it. Now there's a couple of programs out there I think I mentioned one of them on the website um, but uh, you know it's just grunt, grunt, you got to grunt through it and um, and it helps if you have uh, a context for all that to happen in. And uh, my particular context, yours too, is uh, the dead music. And there, there you go. Now, uh, you may have noticed tonight I'm a little quiet and subdued. And uh, the reason is uh, I'm in the house. And uh, I'm going to leave you with uh, one last idea. If you play in the house, and if you happen to be married, uh, and if you play the same lick over and over and over again, and you do this for a year or two, you know, different licks, but uh, just constant repetition trying to get that lick down, eventually your wife is going to come to you and say, uh, why don't you build a studio out back? And that's what happened to me. So, uh, see you next time from the studio. Thanks for putting up with all this.